there is a big offering of good gelato in Melbourne, um, but at the time there really wasn't much around. So I think um, I think we were the first um, in what we did, and um, yeah, I think people now have a bit of an understanding on what good gelato is. This is the producers. I'm Danny Vallant. Is there anything better than gelato? Lisa Valmorbida and her brother Jamie come from an entrepreneurial, food-loving Italian family. So when Lisa identified a gap in the Australian market for high-quality gelato, it set them on the pathway to Pitta Pippo. Ten years later, there are three popular Melbourne stores and a new laboratorio making small batch and bespoke flavours. Pitta Pippo is one of the city's leading artisanal gelato businesses, scooping smiles day after day. I'm Lisa Valmorbida. I'm the founder, co-founder of Pitta Pippo and um, we're a gelateria um, in Melbourne. We got started almost, it was, it's nine years ago now, it's coming up to... Um, 10 years next year. So um, we, I started off working as a chef and studied as to be a chef. And um, when I was working in kitchens, I just always knew I wanted to do something for myself. Um, and having an Italian background, I knew that the, and being, you know, traveling to Italy, the offering in Melbourne um, didn't compare. And I knew that there was something I was interested in and I thought, it would be um, a great opportunity to go over to Italy and learn how to do it. Um, and when I got there, um, I knew that that was exactly what I was meant to be doing and absolutely loved it. And, um, yeah, so I studied at a gelato university and worked in a gelateria in Italy and then came back um, and got all the machinery and started all my recipes and um, we opened – almost 10 years ago, the test lab. And now we've got, we've got three stores and we've just opened um, Pitta Pippa Laboratorio. Lisa saw a marked contrast between the fresh fruit-focused gelato she enjoyed in Italy and the more commercial industrial gelato scooped in Australia. She made it her mission to bring a more Italian approach to the frozen confections on offer back home. Yeah, so I guess in Italy, the, the, the everything is sort of made from scratch and um, they use all fresh seasonal fruits. Um, and in Australia, it was, you know, I think everyone knew gelato was like with the, um, with all the food colorings and the flavorings and um, all the pastes and um, maybe it's, you know, f- fruit purees rather than real fruit. Um, so when you go to Italy, like everything just tastes so much better and um, like, like the real thing. Um, so yeah, I think that it was sort of educating the market um, at the time on what that was. And, um, you know, when people were eating our fruit gelatos, they, they would say, oh, my God, this tastes exactly like a mango. Um, and that's because it is a mango. <laughs> and But people weren't used to that at the time, which was, which is really quite weird. And, you know, like a banana was white and people maybe used to saying yellow. And it sounds, yeah, it sounds weird now because I think everyone understands um, and has, you know, there's there's a bit more on the market now. Um, so people know what to look for and um, I think, um, yeah, it's just um, making everything from scratch and um, making it fresh, churning it fresh on site um, makes such a big difference and, yeah, storing it in the pot setty so you're preserving all the, um, the temperature and the humidity levels and um, it just makes such a big difference to the product. It's more complicated than it seems making the recipes. It's like you can't just throw in um, sugar and milk and cream and sort of hope for the best. Like everything has to be um, calibrated and like calculated in a formula. So um, each flavor has the same fat content and sugar content. And, um, and yeah, when you're working with different ingredients, you're sort of balancing everything, everything out. Um, so it was about learning how to do that and um yeah i that, that it was it went for a month long so there's you know there's all different um levels of it and um i sort of did the whole thing and then working in the gelateria after was um was also 
really good because I learned about all the ingredients and there's so many rules in Italy um, with like what you would consider good gelateria and what, what's a bad gelateria. So um, I guess I got that sort of, I got that insider knowledge with all of that part as well. Lisa spent a lot of time in Italy learning how to identify a great gelato shop from an also ran. From the pozzetti littered serving counters to the number of flavours on sale, there are subtle signals of quality. The pozzetti, that's the, um, the serving counter where it's with the lids, everything's, um, everything's uh, covered and preserved instead of having the big mounds on display. Um, so you look for that because it means that, that the quality of the product's the number one priority. Um, and yeah, it's not exposed to the air and um, the, you know, the humidity levels and the circulation of the temperature is really maintained properly. Um, then 20 flavours is the maximum amount that you would sell because if you have any more, it means that you're unable to um, ensure that it's fresh every day. Um, and then, yeah, seeing sort of fresh fruits and seeing the production and um, knowing that they're sort of making it there on site um, is really important because you want to be churning all throughout the day. Like if customers would come in um, when I was in Italy and they'd ask what the freshest flavour was, that it wouldn't be what their favourite flavour was. It was they would always go for the freshest one that was just made. Um, so just, yeah, and about all the nuts and the types of chocolate and um, all of those kind of things I learned a lot about um, as well. Ice cream wasn't the first career path for Lisa Valmorbida, but a love of cooking and a family background in food reeled her in. When I finished school, I started in an interior design course and then um, I was spending all my time watching cooking shows and cooking and um, realised that I just needed to stop doing interior design and then follow my passion, which was cooking and um, uh, to be enrolled in cooking school um, I worked at Donovan's in St Kilda um, and then for like three years and then that was when I went to, to Italy um, after that um, and started that journey so yeah but my, my family have a background um, so my my nono when he first came out to Australia he his career was all in food um, bringing Italian food products to Australia and olive oil and parmesan and ta- kin- ta- canned tomatoes and tuna. So um, it's sort of like, yeah, our family sort of um, is, you know, food's very important to us. So I guess I've sort of grown up in a very fruity family. Everyone is very passionate and um, has lots of ideas. So we're all, um, yeah, sort of I do it. I work with my brother, um, Jamie and I started Pinnipi almost 10 years ago um, as a test lab on Faraday Street, um, which is where we sort of experimented and um, got an idea about how we wanted to do the permanent store. And, um, yeah, and then I guess the laboratorio is the same concept but on a larger scale. Um, and it's just where we can, yeah, um, expand on our offering and um, and – yeah, keep um, innovating on in what we do. We work really well together. We we sort of have the same. We've got the same ideas on everything, and then he trusts me on all the food side of things, and then I trust him on on um, on all the marketing and the um, business side of things. So um, yeah, it's it works really well. Lisa knows that the most famous flavors will always dominate her stores, but she's also keen to experiment. The new Laboratorio prioritises small batch flavours made with local ingredients. There will also be some wild flights of fancy. Because we've got three stores, it's, we, we have a formula of how we, we make everything and, you know, like strawberry and watermelon and mango and chocolate and all those flavours are always going to be the most popular and um, we, it's hard to just throw on a flavour when you have a small amount of an ingredient or... Um, maybe something's really labour intensive that we can't actually make enough of it. So we, I loved the Tesla because it felt like I just made something and put on the menu and um, it it was really fun sort of doing it like that. Um, And now with the, with the lab, we can, um, it's the same sort of concept. Like I can just 
we can make a flavor and put it straight on the on the menu and um really it's about celebrating all amazing p- fruit growers and different in- ingredients and um and yeah just more limited edition flavors we can put on the menu at the laboratorio so we're we're starting with um a white chocolate and pink peppercorn which is really good um it's sort of the the pepper sort of balances out the sweetness of the white chocolate um and then we've got a Maya lemon so it's quite hard to get your hands on my lemons um and we've secured one tree so where it's not going to be on for very long um but yeah it's just like a sweeter um variety of a lemon you can almost just eat it straight as a fruit um and then what else are we doing we're doing a goat's yogurt and saffron we've got a an australian saffron that we're using um and then we're doing um buffalo milk fior de latte and yeah flavors like that so yeah so all the flavors are new that we've created for the lab and we'll continue to change the flavors and make we might have just one um one batch of a flavor and um it it will sort of run a bit like that Pita Pippo Gelato is a seasonal product using only fresh fruit sourced as locally as possible when the seasons change, the ice cream flavours change too. We don't use frozen fruits um, or we, we, we like to support local um, fruit growers and we, we like um, sort of selecting the, quali- the fruits and making sure the quality is what we want. Um, and I like to have the variation in the, in the, in, in the fruits. So... Um, it's not always constant and you will get sort of variations in the taste and I think that that's um, what keeps it real and what keeps it, um, you know, unique. I love when the seasons change and you get all the f- different fruits again because um, you sort of work with and then you just can't wait for the next fruits to come out and especially summer when strawberries and mangoes and everything come out again, it's pretty, it's always so exciting. Some flavours never go out of style or out of season. Is your favourite gelato flavour one of the mainstays? Um, pistachios, always, that's our biggest seller. Um, I think we've got eight flavours that a majority of our sales, um, which are the classic ones. It's always chocolate, um, pistachio, hazelnut, bacho, um, Nutella swirl, salted caramel, and, and then everything else is, um, yeah, so it's just everyone just loves the classics. I feel like now I kind of know what works and I just work at it until I get it right. But um, I once tried a cucumber flavour, like in a cream base, which was a really big <laughs> mistake. And I couldn't, I, that was just the most disgusting thing I've ever tasted. So um, never, never got that right and I don't think I ever will. There's a fine art and a fair bit of muscle involved in scooping ice cream. What are the tricks Lisa tries to pass on to her staff? I remember in Italy, it took me a really long time to learn how to do it. I couldn't get it right. And then when I got, I I finally sort of learned, but I wasn't amazing at it. And then when I got back to Australia um, and I was teaching my team how to do it, um, for some reason, I just got it when I was teaching them. So um, I think, yeah, I don't know. You sort sort of just work it out and um, it's just practice, but. It's about sort of working the gelato and getting it into the perfect shape before you put it on the cone. Um, And that takes a lot of practice and, yeah, it's been the challenge. Um, Some people get it and some people can't sort of get it. Um, You can tell (laughs) straight away. I think you need a bit of strength and um, you can't be sort of timid in how you do it. You have to really get into it. Being an ice cream manufacturer sounds like delivering happiness day after day. What does Lisa love about what she does? I love perfecting and um, keep improving all the time and learning new things and, um, yeah, just perfecting the one skill is um, is something I, yeah, I'm really passionate about. It is very re- rewarding when, um, when you see people loving what you do. Um, so... I feel very lucky that um, we've had such a good response from people and um, 
I feel like they know the difference. Yeah, when we first opened and people started queuing, like I just got so excited and I still feel the same now and I can't believe it's it's continued continued 10 years on um, and I feel really lucky and um, it's just, yeah, it's an amazing feeling. Pitta Pippo is many things. It's Lisa Val Morbida's entrepreneurial passion. It's a showcase of local produce and it's a respectful Australian rendering of a grand Italian tradition. More than anything, over 10 years of quality production, it's become an essential ritual for thousands of Melburnians who will happily line up for a Pitta Pippo cone or cup. Make mine a double with hazelnut and watermelon. This is The Producers, a Deep in the Weeds production. I'm Danny Vallant. Stay tuned as we talk to some of Australia's best farmers, makers and growers. Follow us on Instagram at Producers Podcast or contact us via deepintheweeds.com.au.